as with almost all happenings on the internet, people hear about them, they talk about them, and then they tend to forget about them. And, uh, looking at the date, it seems like it's about time for another reminder of what's to come. Because right now, we are at a major, major turning point. Way, way back in the ancient times of 2019, we started hearing about an update to the Chrome extension API going from Manifest V2 up to Manifest V3, commonly just referred to as their acronyms MV2 and MV3 respectively. Now from the very, very start, organizations like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the EFF, were not exactly happy about MV3. 2019, Google's plans for Chrome extensions won't really help security. 2021, Manifest V3, open web politics in sheep's clothing, and 2021, Chrome users beware, Manifest V3 is deceitful and threatening. And on this channel, I've talked about MV3 a number of times as various different things have been changing, as various relevant parties have put out their statements. And I know it's been a while since I last talked about it, but this hasn't stopped. The timeline is still moving. The transition from MV2 up to MV3 is still happening. Starting a few weeks ago on June 3rd, the Manifest V2 phase-out begins on the Chrome Beta, Dev, and Canary channels. If users still have Manifest V2 extensions installed, some will start to see a warning bar when visiting their extension management page at this link right here, informing them that Manifest V2 extensions they have installed will no longer be supported. At the same time, extensions with the feature badge that are using Manifest V2 will lose their badge. So on the store, they have certain extensions that are marked as, these are special extensions, hey look, they're cool, go and check them out. Those ones will no longer have that badge. Here they say June 3rd, but what they are specifically referring to is the Chromium 127 branch. So right now on Arch, I still have 126 installed, so none of this stuff has happened on my system yet. This will be followed gradually in the coming months by the disabling of those extensions. So if you still have an MV2 extension installed, it's going to be automatically disabled. Users will be directed to the Chrome Web Store where they'll be recommended MV3 alternatives for their disabled extension. For a short time after the extensions are disabled, users will still be able to turn their Manifest V2 extensions back on, but over this time, this toggle will go away. So they are completely ditching the idea of running these older extensions. Now for the enterprise users, they have a bit more time to work with. They can go and enable the extension manifest v2 availability policy and we exempt from any browser changes until June 2025. After this point though, MV2 is going to be completely gone. Assuming that once again things don't go badly for Google and they have to delay the rollout again. I don't see that happening this time. The extensions that are ported are in a much better state. I think it's something like 85% porting. So by that point, they should be fine. Now I've seen a lot of people ask, oh, is it going to affect this Chromium-based browser or that Chromium-based browser? Unless the browser has put out a specific statement saying, we are going to keep supporting MV2, it's safe to assume that it's just going to get rid of it and just keep doing what upstream Chromium is doing. Now, there are some browsers like Brave, Vivaldi, and things like that, which may have a built-in content blocker, but that's different from full MV2 support. And the content blockers are the main focus here, because whilst there have been a number of issues brought up over the five years of MV3 discussions now, I have no idea how it's been that long, the limitations on content blockers are kind of the main thing that most people talk about. Now, the reason I say content blocker instead of ad blocker is nowadays people want to block a lot more than just the ads. Obviously, ads are included, but things like trackers. Some people like blocking unwanted site content like YouTube Shorts, for example, and anything else that you just don't want to deal with in your browsing experience. Now, to Google's credit, or more like... The user's credit who realized they were a frog being boiled, Google has had to backtrack 
a lot of the major issues we saw with MV3 that made it basically unusable for doing content blocking. When they started the phase out in the early releases, they also released this blog post, Manifest V2 Phase Out Begins. And the important part, addressing community feedback. So they listened to the things you were saying and the things you were doing. We improved things and this included adding support for user scripts and introducing off-screen documents to allow extensions to use DOM APIs from a background context. And based on input from the extension community, we also increased the number of rule sets for declarative net requests, allowing extensions to bundle up to 330,000 static rules and dynamically add a further 30,000. To the best of my recollection, the number total was 30,000 rules. Now, rules are used to define the things you want to block, basically. They're used for various other things, but in the context of a content blocker, things that you want to filter out. Going from 30,000 to 330,000 plus an additional 30,000 dynamic, this is night and day difference. You could not block things in a modern context across tons and tons of websites with only 30,000 total rules. But here's the thing. This goes back to my boil the frog theory. This is much better than it was before. But as users want more and more freedom to block more and more content, more and more websites are being handled, more and more complex advertising is being used, you can start creeping very, very close to that limit. It may be suitable for today, and it's certainly higher than Safari having only 150,000, but will it be suitable for that much longer? Never forget, boil the frog. And another major issue is on MV2, you could just push rule updates whenever you wanted. So a website like YouTube, is frequently making very minor little changes on the back end to make sure that content blockers are not working properly. So you need to be able to push an update basically whenever that happens. Now on MV3, originally that was not going to be possible and the only way to push a rule update was going to be a full update to the extension. Now the problem with that is full updates go through a review period, and then by the time the review period is over, some of the rules may be out of date again, requiring yet another review period. Updating a content blocking extension like this was absolutely not viable, and yes, for some websites it was gonna be fine, but the ones that you really care about, it was not gonna work for. But there was an improvement. It's still worse than it was for MV2, but it is better than the start of MV3. This is similar to a concept known as anchoring, where it's often used with microtransactions, where initially you set a really high price. Nobody wants to pay the really high price, but it sets in your head that that is the price of the object. And then you apply something like a 50% discount, and because your idea in your head is this really high price, now it looks like a really good deal. You're supposed to just forget the fact that at one point that thing was free, that thing was just part of the software, and if you do forget that fact, you are now tricked into thinking you get a really good deal. So what's happening now is when you want to go and update these rules, you can skip the review process. You still need to make a full update to the extension, but if only safe data is being changed, now you don't have to have the full review. Now the update takes only a couple of minutes. Before, it was instant, but hey, let's not talk about before. One change that is kind of nice to have is the ability to roll back to an older version of the extension. So if you ship a buggy version of the extension, you don't have to go through the whole review process again to be like, okay, well, here is the non-buggy version. They know there is a non-buggy version in their system, so they just go back to the non-buggy version. For a number of years now, there have been attempts to build MV3 compatible content blockers, most notably AdGuard, AdGuard AdBlocker MV3 Experimental, which is a needlessly long title for it, uBlock Origin Lite, and AdBlock Plus also has an MV3 version as well. Now, for the most part, 
these are considered like experimental testing versions that you can use, but they're nowhere near as good as the MV2 versions. Now, depending on the sites you use, you may have a fine experience because it is going to work relatively well on a lot of sites. Also, MV3 is supposed to be faster than MV2, so that also might be an improvement as well. But overall, in their content blocking ability, they are going to be worse. There is a number of reasons why they're worse, not just the fact that MV3 is a worse solution. There is also the fact that up until very recently, maintaining one of these extensions just hasn't been viable because of the way they were doing their reviews, so there was a lot less work being put into the MV3 versions. Also, there is sort of a general lack of interest in working with MV3 when it comes to content blocking because everybody in this space knows it's an inferior solution, so because they haven't been forced to work on it, there just hasn't been an interest in working around it to make it work as well as you can possibly make it. Different extensions take that to a different extent, like uBlock Origin Lite is very much going to the extreme in that extent, but others like AdBlock, they have got a much better experience. But again, boil the frog, make it worse than MV2, but not so much worse that you notice that everything's boiling around you. If you are interested in continuing to use MV2 extensions, Firefox for the time being is going to be retaining support. That's pretty much all you're going to get. Chromium based browsers, I don't know of any that are going to actively support MV2. Solutions like Brave and Vivaldi are going to have their built in content blockers, which work separately from the MV2 stuff. But that's basically it. If there's anything else MV2 that you need, basically Firefox is going to be your best bet. Things are set to be not as bad as when MV3 was first announced and the timeline was first beginning. But as listed on the frequently asked questions regarding uBlock Origin Lite, there are still a number of things missing with MV3 that do make making a content blocker just noticeably worse. Now, not so much worse that it's completely unusable, but worse in very important ways. Is this going to affect you, the technical user that knows, oh, I can go and use Firefox and get around this? No, but it's not supposed to affect you. It's supposed to affect the average person using Chrome, who's just gonna keep using Chrome and then maybe they'll grab an MV3 version of an ad blocker instead and it'll be slightly worse but it'll work well enough because they won't actually know who to blame. They won't know to blame the actual browser developer. They're going to blame the extension developer because the extension they have now doesn't work as good as the extension they used to have and they have no idea that anything has changed. But what do you guys think? Do you think the MV3 transition is actually going to happen this time? or somehow it's going to get delayed again. And what browser are you using? I'd love to know down below. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Liberape linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Fire... You're fired. Yeah.